Let's go to page 72, and this is lesson 2.1. And the objective of this, les this lesson is to use inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning mean, basically means you look for pattern and try to figure out um, you know, the, the next step. For example, like if you look at this example, it says describe how to sketch the fourth figure. So you got figure one, two, three. So by looking at the pattern, you have to figure out what is the, the next uh, next uh, picture would be. So if you notice a figure one, you got, you got one line, right, cutting, so you got one diameter. Figure two, you got two diameters, and they all divide the regions equally. Figure three, you got three diameters. So by just using the inductive reasoning, you got one, two, three. So that means the next picture will have four diameters, one, two, three, four, okay? And also, Notice the shaded area. Okay, you shaded one region of each pattern. So over here you shade one region, one region, one region, so one region. Okay. So so basically you want to try to look for the pattern and figure out what is the next picture or next number. Okay. So for example, like this one over here, example two, describe a number pattern. So you have negative seven, negative twenty-one, negative sixty-three negative 189 and write the next three numbers in the pattern okay so when you have numbers normally what you want to do if you want to you want to find out if they are multi, multi you have to multiply to get to the next number or you have to add okay so in this case notice that you have to multiply by three this is multiplied by three multiplied by three so the pattern is multiplied by three in each uh each each you know the different uh the, between the numbers so to get the next three number, you just multiply by three, so you get that. Multiply by three, you get that. Multiply by two, you get that. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the definition up here. So again, as I mentioned earlier, in inductive reasoning, okay, it says a conjecture is an unproven statement that is based on observation. So again, a conjecture is something that is unproven and it's based on the the observation. You use inductive reasoning when you find a pattern in specific cases and then write a conjecture for the general case. Okay. Now the one thing I have to be very careful is that inductive reasoning, the answer you get okay, may not guarantee it's correct. Okay. Most of the time would be correct but not guaranteed. Okay. In some rare cases you may think it's correct but, but you may end up with a wrong conclusion or wrong um, the, the numbers or the answer. So just be aware of that. Okay? But usually, most of the time, you're fine. Okay? But in some rare cases, you have to be extremely careful. Okay, let's go to example three. Make a conjecture. Okay, so it says, giving five coordinate uh, points. Okay, so coordinate means on a straight line, right? Make a conjecture about the number of ways to connect different pairs of points. So when you have only one point, there's a picture, right? Number connection, zero. When you have two points, the picture is like that, two points, right? So there's only one connection, one way of connecting the two points. Okay, when you have three points, okay, you can connect this way, this way, this way. There are three ways. When you have the four points, one, two, three, four, so you can connect this way, this way, this way, and and also notice you can also connect um, this here, you can connect this here. The only, sh so, so, you, so you, again, you can see that, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, right? There are six different ways you can connect the four points. Okay, so now, when you have more points, the things get very complicated. So instead of trying to figure, instead of trying to counting them, what you do is write down the pattern. So this is zero, one, three, six, right? So what you do is find the difference. So Difference between these two numbers is one. Difference between the two numbers is two. Difference between the number is three. So you can see the difference between the number by the pattern, one, two, three, four. So the difference between these two would be four. And so six plus four will give you 10, okay? So you can do, so use the difference, okay? And once you figure out the difference, so by looking at the pattern, one, two, three, four, okay? So six plus four will give you 10. So this should be a 10, okay? And the next one, if you want to go to the next one, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, and this is 10, this is five, so if you have next one, it would be 15, okay? Okay. 
Let's go to example four. Make a make and test a conjecture. Okay, it says numbers such as three, four, five are called consecutive integers. Means that there, then there's no skipping. Okay, and it says make and test a, and a conjecture about the sum of any three consecutive integers. Okay, okay. So let's try. So over here, Stefan found a pattern using a few groups of small numbers. So when you got three, four, five. Is equal to, so three plus four plus five equal to twelve, and twelve is equal to you know you, you break it down into factors right so twelve is equal to four times three okay now if you try seven eight nine if you add you get twenty four which is equal to eight times three okay and if you add ten eleven twelve you get thirty three which will equal to eleven times three sixteen plus seventeen plus eighteen will give you fifty one which is equal to seventeen times three. So conjecture or the the observation you can make from this is that the sum of any three consecutive integer is three times the second number. Notice here's your middle number, right? Okay. Okay. So again, the sum of any three consecutive numbers, uh, three integer, is always three times the second number. And it's kind of obvious because if you think about it, right, if you just move one of these, so five, right? If you move one to this side, you end up with four, 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 right? Same thing. If you move one, if you move one from the nine and put over here, right? If you move one from the nine to the give it to the seven, you end up with eight, eight, eight. See that? Same thing. If you give one from here and give it to the ten, you end up with eleven, eleven, eleven. Okay. So that's why it's the sum of any three consecutive number is always three times the second, the middle number, because you always can get one from the big number and give it to the smallest number to even it out. So like this one, you end up with 17, 17, 17. And that's a reason for that when you're adding three consecutive numbers, it will always equal to three times the middle number, okay? Okay, okay let's go to um, the next one. Disproving conject uh, conjectures, okay? So, it says to show that a conjecture is true, you must show that it is true for all cases. And sometimes it's impossible because there can be an infinite number of cases, right? You can show that a conjecture is false, however, by simply finding one counterexample. So again, if you want to show that something is, is false, all you have to do is provide one example that is false, okay? So it's a lot easier to prove that something is, not, is false than try to prove something that's true. A counterexample is a specific case for which conjecture is false. So if you go to example five, find, it, find a counterexample. A student make the following conjecture about the sum of two numbers. Find a counterexample to disprove the student's conjecture. So conjecture is like a statement. Okay? So it said the sum of two numbers is always greater than the larger number. Okay? So is that true? Well, it's not true. So you have to prove that. You just come up with an example to show that this is not true. So solution would be if you use the negative numbers, okay? So it says to find a counterexample, you need to find a sum that is less than the larger number. So here's your example. So if you have negative 2 plus negative 3 equal to negative 5. So the sum is not, see over here, the sum is not greater than negative 2. So you can, so by doing, using the negative number, you can prove that. That, that is not true, okay? This is true only if all the numbers are positive, or all the, only if it, the numbers are not negative, okay? Okay, so over here it says, because a counterexample exists, the conjecture is false. So if you can come up with an example to show that that is, that is not true, then, then you can prove that, that that conjecture is false. Okay, let's go to example six. Okay, standardized test practice. Okay, so um, it says, which conjecture, so this is kind of, if you have to take like an SAT or whatever, so that, that you may encounter this kind of problem. So this kind of problem is just a practice for the, you know, for the like SAT test. It says, which conjecture could a high school athletic director make based on the graph at the right? So here's your graph, okay? So you have the girls' um, registrations and year, okay? So you have girls' soccer participation. So you want to see which is correct. Okay, so sometimes you, it may not be obvious. So another way, one, one of the ways to do it is by 
doing the elimination, eliminate the answer that you know is not correct. Okay. Okay. More boys play soccer than girls. Okay. Is that true? Well, you don't know that it doesn't say anything about boys. So this, so you, so you cannot say that this is true for sure. So you can cross out the A. Okay. Now B is as more girls are playing soccer today than 1995. Well, today is way out here. You don't know. So that's whole of this. It may be true. It may not be true. By looking at this, it looks like it's going up. Okay, so most likely it's true, but we don't have that information. So let's hold off on that. So we already eliminated A, okay? Okay, now let's look at C. It says more people are playing soccer today than in the past because, because the 1994 World Cup games were held in the United States, okay? Well, that's, this, have, this squad has nothing to do with the World Cup, okay? So... So you cannot say that this is true, okay? So you can cross that out, okay? Now, D, the number of girls playing soccer was more in 1995 than 2001. So 1995 is here, 2001 is here. So this is more than that, so that is false. So by eliminating answer A, C, and D, the only choice left is B. So we can say, okay, the, we can conclude that the B is um, the... Uh, it's the it's answer.